If you ever feel out of control around food, you're not alone, and you're in the right place to learn practical, no-nonsense information about why you binge and how to stop. Binge eating does not mean that something is wrong with you. It's a natural but primitive brain response that you can correct. If you're ready for change, sign up for the Brain Over Binge self-paced online course for less than $20 per month. And if you feel you need personalized support, we also offer one-on-one coaching and group coaching. To learn more, go to brainoverbinge.com forward slash subscribe. And I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to the Brain Over Binge podcast, where we share a simple brain-based approach to ending binge eating. I'm Katherine Hansen. I'm the author of Brain Over Binge and also the Brain Over Binge Recovery Guide. And I'm so glad to be here today with my colleague and friend, who is a master coach and author, Cookie Rosenblum. Thank you, Katherine. It's always a pleasure to work with you. And we're, I'm happy to be here for our audience, and we're excited to help you. In the Brain Over Binge podcast, we're sharing a brain-based approach that we hope will empower you to end binge eating. This approach is based on the idea that binge eating is not a disease, but a habit that is rooted in your lower brain, which could also be called your primal brain. We're teaching you how to use your higher brain to overcome this destructive habit. We've been learning about how you can dismiss the urges to binge. As a reminder, dismissing urges means to experience these urges in a new way that renders the urges powerless and puts you back in charge. When you dismiss the urges, you do not take them seriously, and you stop turning attention to them. You view them as just faulty messages from your lower brain that don't indicate your true wants and your true needs. And then most importantly, you don't act on these urges. We've shared the first four components of dismissing urges in the previous four episodes, and today we'll talk about the fifth and final component of dismissing the urges. The fifth component is to get excited. And this means to get excited about your success in dismissing urges and also to get excited about recovery itself. We kind of look at component number five as the easy and fun one because it feels very natural. Once you've been able to follow those four natural steps of recognizing what that urge is, where it comes from, and that it's not the real you and being able to not act on it, then this last component, getting excited, it comes naturally. It's a natural product of not acting on those urges because it is exciting. It's exciting to get your life back. And it's exciting not to be dragged down by the binge eating that you used to do if you follow these steps. We want you to get excited about that. And the reason for the excitement and the reason it's not just you know, a fun thing to do, but it's truly a part of this process is that it actually works in your brain neurologically by cementing what you've learned in your brain. When you congratulate the ability of your higher brain to dismiss those urges, that new pathway gets stronger. And now you want to make not responding to the urge the new pathway. That's your goal. And the way to do that is with emotion, with excitement. Most likely, this is the opposite of what you've been doing, because we know that when you follow the urge, most of you get upset. You get upset when the urge shows up, and you certainly get upset when you follow it, and unknowingly, that makes it stronger. So when you follow the four components and you're able to dismiss it, which you will be, we're confident, then number five is get excited. Let's make the new pathway stronger. That's right. Celebrating your success in dismissing urges is so important, and it actually makes it more likely that you're going to keep repeating the new skill of not acting on urges and therefore making that new pathway in your brain stronger. Another really important aspect of the fifth component is to celebrate the positive benefits of recovery that you notice once you stop acting on these urges. Even though we know your life certainly won't be perfect after you stop acting on urges, we do want you to recognize that stopping binge eating does lead you toward a better life. 
When you aren't binging, you'll have more mental space, you'll have more time, you'll be able to do other things, or just focus on what's important to you in your life. And we want you to be excited about that. Getting excited about the good things that recovery brings is going to help you stay motivated to dismiss the urges over and over until they go away completely. So for example, you may feel less depressed and less anxious when you're not binge eating. You may suddenly be able to enjoy meals with your family. You may have more energy to pursue your goals or just spend time with the people you care about. We want you to take note of all of that and really get excited about it. Now, that being said, we want you to remember that you aren't going to feel good all of the time, even when you're binge-free, and that is completely normal. A very important aspect of this approach is that you can dismiss urges regardless of how you feel. But that being said, it is helpful to notice the positive aspects. It's helpful to notice that putting aside binge eating does bring you closer to a life that you want. And this is sometimes simply by just giving you freedom, just giving you the freedom to do what you want to do during the day and what you need to do without the binge eating dragging you down. You know, focusing on other things in life that Catherine just mentioned is actually going to help you get rid of the old habits faster. And by focusing on other things, you're going to be getting your attention off your urges, off food, off dieting, off your weight, off your eating, the whole subject. So when you focus on other people, activities and interests in your life, some of them may already be in your life or Maybe this is a good time to add new things to your life now that your time won't be consumed with the binge eating. But we don't want you to be upset if you're not even sure what to focus on because so much of your energy and time and mental space has been focused on fighting against the urges and hoping that they won't come back and hoping that you could be strong. So at this point, when you've been following these steps, you can start thinking about the rest of your life. And that includes everything, work, relationships, your environment, taking care of yourself, all the different aspects that maybe up to this point, you were just not able to give too much attention to. Yeah, that's so important. And in discussing each of these components in the previous episodes, we've given you a common question or an issue that often comes up relating to the component that we're talking about. And in talking about the fifth component of getting excited, when people hear this recommendation, it can sometimes have a paradoxical effect of causing some anxiety or some fear about getting excited. And if you find this happening... The reason could be that you've already tried to recover so many times and you've already tried lots of other methods and maybe you didn't have the success that you hoped for. So now you may feel like if you get excited, you're going to risk just being disappointed again, like maybe you have been in the past. But we want you to know that this time you know something differently. You know that your higher brain is in charge and you know you don't need to follow these urges from your lower brain anymore. And we believe this is a reason to get excited. And even if you have some anxiety or some fear about getting excited, we want to encourage you to try to take that risk and get excited anyway, because it really does increase your chances of success. It helps you focus attention on the higher brain, and really helps you keep repeating that new behavior. You may also hesitate when it comes to some of the other suggestions we gave in this podcast, such as focus on other things in your life or adding new activities or beginning to do things you enjoy, because again, you may fear that binge eating is just going to strip it away again. If you've experienced this in the past, it's completely understandable that you'd feel this way. But even so, we do want you to get excited anyway. And each time you have the urge and you don't act on it, we want you to feel good about that and notice the positive benefits. And we believe by doing this over and over, you're going to gain confidence and you're going to be able to let go of that fear and realize that these fears aren't going to become a reality and you can continue dismissing these urges and focusing on other parts of your life. Now that you know you're always in control, and that your lower brain can't control your actions, you're free. You're free to live your life the way you want without worrying that binge eating is going to take hold again. 
And this is real. This is neuroscience. This is not like the old positive mental attitude work from years ago where you would just take a good thought and practice it again and again and again and look in the mirror and try to talk yourself into believing something positive. But what science shows now is that being positive about recovery truly will increase your chances of success. Because if you think that you can't do it, then most likely you won't be successful. If you believe that you can live without binge eating, you most likely will do the work and it will happen. The reason for this is not just keeping your fingers crossed and hoping and being positive. It's simply that your thoughts, whatever your thoughts are about anything in life, are what create your feelings, your emotions. Your emotions are what help you figure out what actions to take. So if you think to yourself, I can never do this, you're creating a feeling of hopelessness. And when you are hopeless, as soon as an urge comes up, you're going to be so much more likely to just follow it as you've always done in the past and not try the steps that we're giving you. But if you can think something different like, if anyone can do this, I can. One of my favorite sayings, as you've probably heard me say several times already. But if you think something like that, you're going to create a feeling of optimism, even if you've never done it yet. It still feels possible. And if it feels possible, then when it comes to taking an action, you're so much more likely to say, okay, I'm going to try these five steps. If it worked for someone else, Maybe it will work for me. I can do it. So being positive truly will make a difference for you. That's right. I completely agree. I also want to mention another issue that tends to come up when people learn component five, and we tell them to get excited about the positive aspects of their lives when they're not binge eating. Some people have said in response to this recommendation, well, getting excited sounds great in theory, but I have nothing to get excited about in my life. If you have this thought, consider that it's mostly because the binge eating has taken so much away from you. Binge eating causes countless problems, and it may have caused you to isolate yourself over time and to avoid building a life that you want. So in the beginning of recovery, it may indeed seem like your life doesn't have as many positive things for you to focus on as you would like. But the only way to start gaining those positive things and to eventually feel more positive in your life is by putting aside the binge eating. And by doing that, you can gradually discover day after day the things that you enjoy and the things you want to focus on and how you want to live. I think what you're describing, Catherine, sounds a little bit like you need to take a leap of faith. You need to believe that beyond struggling with this issue, there are things to be excited about, but there's no way that you could feel that now because you're in the midst of a struggle. So we hope that you do take that leap of faith. You know, leaving the binge eating behind you will open you up to all kinds of possibilities. And as we're saying, we know that it could be scary at first. Most likely, you've been under the weight of the binges, taking so much of your mental energy, your physical energy, and it might be hard to see the light from that dark place. But when your binge eating is something that's just no more, you're going to have mental energy to decide how you want your life to be and who you want to be in the world. So if some time goes by and you truly are thinking that you have nothing to be excited about, and maybe because you're thinking that, you feel depressed about your life, after you deal with the urges to binge and they lessen and fade away, then you can always work on that. Binge eating is not a solution to make you happy and it actually makes things worse. And stopping binge eating, on the other hand, gives you tremendous relief, but it also doesn't change your entire life. It gives you the freedom then to change it. That's right. And you can then work on finding real solutions to whatever is troubling you. And that really wraps up today's episode and our discussion of Component 5. And we hope that it's been helpful to you and has given you the tools to let the urges pass 
without acting on them. And remember, when you don't act on urges to binge over and over, you literally erase the habit from your brain. And in the next few episodes, we're going to move on from discussing these five components, and we're going to talk about some common issues and questions that arise during recovery. And we believe these discussions will be very beneficial to you if you feel like you need additional guidance beyond learning these five components of dismissing urges. And also remember, you can get some more guidance in my free ebook, which walks you through the basics of dismissing urges and also helps you apply them in your own life. So if you're interested in that, please click the link in the show notes to get the free ebook. And there is also a link in the show notes to learn more about Cookie and to get her free ebook as well. You know, we just want you to know that we're here for you and we really do know what's possible for you. We know for sure that this works, and we know for sure that if it works for anyone, it can work for you. So we hope that you truly consider and take to heart what we're offering you and try it. And if we can help in any way, you can always reach us through our links in the show notes. And we hope you can join us again next time. And for now, this is Catherine and Cookie reminding you that you have the power to change your brain and live a binge-free life. The Brain Over Binge podcast is produced and recorded by Brain Over Binge Recovery Coaching, LLC. All work is copyrighted by Brain Over Binge Recovery Coaching, LLC, and all rights are reserved. As a disclaimer, the hosts of the Brain Over Binge podcast are not professional counselors or licensed healthcare providers, and this podcast is not a substitute for medical advice or any form of professional therapy. Eating disorders can have serious health consequences, and you are strongly advised to seek medical attention for matters relating to your health. Please get help when you need it, and good luck on your journey. Need more help? You can find all of our current and upcoming options for support at brainoverbinge.com.